Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath Hurricane Track here Monday now the 25th of November 2024. Hope you're ready for the cold because it is coming to areas east of the Rockies over the next several days. Nothing brutal, nothing too unusual, mind you, but definitely a change to a more cold and for now a pretty dry pattern overall. No major storm systems. We're just not quite in that mode. The cold air comes first. Then we have to see if the precip eventually comes out of the pattern, but so far we're not seeing anything like that. Also on today's update, just a wee tad, still a little bit of tropical mischief down there in the Caribbean Sea. I'll show you that from a couple of vantage points. And then at the end of the update today, a couple of cool announcements that I want to make regarding our Patreon, some changes that they have made, which are very, very two thumbs up worthy positive. All right, glad you could join me today. Thank you very much. Let's get started, shall we? First of all, we'll look at the satellite shot. It's no National Hurricane Center homepage. Yeah, uh, they don't have a yellow X for this, so I figured why even worry about it? I'll just show you. Disturbed area down here in the Caribbean Sea, and uh, it is bringing showers and thunderstorms over a pretty wide area down here. Disruptive and impactful if you're under it but the modeling generally not too favorable for this to develop. It is mentioned over here at the TAF-B. What is TAF-B? That's the Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch down at the National Hurricane Center. Definitely have some inclement weather down there capable of producing heavy rainfall and some gusty winds. And again, if you're cruising down in that region, that could be problematic. Let's just look at the infographic here. Little frontal boundary down here, low pressure area the monsoon trough, all that kind of good stuff down there. Divergent upper level winds, that means they are spreading out. So you do have this area of showers and thunderstorms because of all this. Really cool that these graphics are put out there because if you even know a little bit about what you're looking at, it makes sense. It kind of puts everything together for you. Bottom line, it is creating a few lightning strikes down there. What were they saying, 10 to 20 lightning flashes? For five minutes, so that's pretty robust lightning. Again, the modeling last night, this is the 0 Z run. I'll make this very clear. This was last night around the time that everybody should have been in bed. The 0 Z run overnight last night into today. And uh, in terms of where to pay attention, watch right down here. This is what the GFS operational was showing that within a few days something tried to finally consolidate and head down in towards Nicaragua. But if we fast forward a mere 12 hours into the future, time travel possible at Tropical Tidbits, right? Then you can see, oh no, it's not there anymore. It does try to consolidate some sort of a large gyre of energy down here, and that is going to bring inclement weather. So you have a, if you have a cruise plan for that area or you're visiting Honduras, Nicaragua, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, it could be unsettled down there for several days as this pattern persists, but overall the upper level wind pattern not very favorable. There's that upper trough digging down into the region and we are getting closer and closer now to just completely shutting the door on any potential development until 2025 and everybody I'm sure is happy for that. Alright, so let's move on now. Lower 48 weather. Now today's map, pretty tranquil overall. Those pink areas that you see out west, I'll draw them in for you just to draw your attention. Right there, that's out west. That would be your winter storm warnings in parts of the Rockies, down the Wasatch, and I don't know what some of those other mountain ranges are. Basically, the mountains outside of St. George, Utah. I know Brian Head Ski Area is in there. I used to live in Vegas a long time ago, a whole generation ago, like literally. And I used to remember all those place names pretty well, but... I do know that this is the Sierra chain right through here. Bottom line, there's some winter weather issues out there where you would expect them to be. And then a few areas up here around the lakes region and some of the Canadian border regions of the northeast with the potential for some winter weather shenanigans. That's a good way to put it, but no widespread problems today. Now, as the week goes on, and as the headline said, still says on today's update, cold head south. So let's look at that. It is coming. So here's Tomer, Tomer Berg. I like to cite different people. You know this. That helps me to round out my discussions here and give you some insight as to what other people are saying. And 
It kind of gives a consensus as to what we're talking about, whether it's off-season winter or severe or whatever, or certainly during hurricane season. So Tomer posting this today while we are heading, actually he posted it yesterday, it was the 24th, still valid. While we're heading into a much colder pattern in the east, cold doesn't automatically equal snow or precipitation. Now this is important because my daughter has often asked me when it's been in the upper 20s around here, she's nine years old now, why isn't it going to snow? It's cold, where's the snow? I think kids grow up especially and we become young adults and then older adults and you see lots of stuff on TV and in movies that cold equals snow. Well, that's just part of the equation. You have to have the cold there and in a pretty deep column of the atmosphere and then you have to have some type of trigger mechanism, a storm system of some kind to make precip, you know, and in this case it would be snow if you had a thick enough cold air column you got to get the snow to develop up in what we call the dendritic growth region snow just doesn't come out of nowhere by the way in fact all precipitation forms on some type of little piece of dust or something uh, condensation nuclei we call that and uh, I know I'm getting into the weeds here but cold does not just equal snow you know it just doesn't just like when we have very warm water and hot temperatures we don't have hurricanes all the time. Our coastal areas would be unlivable if that was the case. And if every time it got cold, it snowed, we would be living on the planet Hoth from Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. How did I sneak that in there today? Well, there you go. So no, cold doesn't necessarily equal snow. And as Tomer goes on to say, we'll spend the first part of the pattern in a cold and dry air mass. That's key. That's important as this type of flow regime is not favorable for east coast cyclones. We just don't have uh, any energy that's coming in from the south to phase with this energy that's coming in from the north and west to give us any kind of big time shenanigans up the east coast and mid-Atlantic and those areas. It's just not happening. But yeah, this is what I based my graphic on today. These are your anomalies at two meters. And so it's not brutal, you know, really. It's just late November. I mean, come on. The cold air has not had a lot of time to settle in over places like Siberia or Alaska or elsewhere, the polar regions. We're getting there. The days have just now really reached, you know, where they really are shorter. And so that cold air just hasn't had time to build up. So let's look at it. Let's see what happens. Tomer said, uh, and, and he's right. I'm not getting ready to prove him wrong. Uh, I'm more confirming what Tomer was talking about, that we have the cold coming down, but not much precip to go with it. So let's just move this through. This is today. And by the way, there's all that snow out west and lower elevation rain. Always good to see in those areas, you know, because it can be pretty dry out there. We always like to see the precip. And uh, as we slide through the week, this is now Wednesday into Thursday. A lot of people will be traveling. And I want to keep you uh, up to date um, and, and have you make sure you keep up to date with Charlotte Airport up here. Understand from radio reports this morning, radio reports, that's what I listen to and take the kids to school. Uh, local radio is saying that I think there's like a ground workers strike or whatever you call it, the ground crew strike, or it's authorized or something. Just pay attention to stuff like that because that in Charlotte combined with Atlanta's like somewhere in there, right? And uh, the D.C. area up here, Baltimore, whatever, these airports along the East Coast, good today through Wednesday, but as you get past Thanksgiving here, which is now Friday morning, anybody trying to fly out Friday morning, this could be a major headache. It really could. And you say, well, Mark, that doesn't look like there's a really big storm there. What are you talking about? Just any kind of precip slows things down. When you have 400 million people going to the airport, I know that's exaggerated, right? That's what I should have done. Maybe next year, <laughs> I was going to say for my project next year, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. For my joke for next year, I should just make the wildest clickbait thumbnails of all time. Like, so absurd. It's almost like my version of Babylon B and the Onion. Not going to do it. Maybe April 1st I will. But... Uh, sometimes my sense of humor gets the best of me. Um, 
Don't tempt me, though. 400 million people headed to the airports this weekend. That would be the <laughs> the headline. Worst blizzard in human history. Uh, I tell you what, my YouTube channel would would have a million subscribers by the end of the the year, and um, I'm gonna say it. My project 2025 would be a smashing success. Oh lordy! Anyway, not gonna do it. I try to stay very serious because the weather controls everything we do. One more joke for you. Even though we don't control the weather, see what I did there? It does control us. Seriously, let's get back firm. Center seriousness. This could be a problem just because it's there. You got a lot of major airport hubs through here and several million people traveling, not 400 million, and no, no, no worst blizzard of all time. But this is enough to tell me, oh, I'm glad I'm not traveling more than just a couple of dozen miles up the road to, that's a little, little bit more than that. We're going to this place called Mike's Farm for our Thanksgiving. If you know it, it's a great place and good tradition. But anyway, take this seriously in terms of uh, having patience and alternate plans and checking with your airline and all that kind of stuff because, you know, this is overnight. This is very early. This is like 1 a.m. Friday. You're heading to the airport. And, you know, just think about overnight Thanksgiving into Friday. This could be a problem. It really will. And look, one more very serious thing. Straight face, very serious. Uh, Fox Weather does a fantastic job of staying on top of airport stuff, information. And uh, so definitely, if you're not already tuned into their app, you can get it right on your phone. It's free. You just get it off of your whatever your smartphone's app store is, and you're good to go. And they do a terrific job of staying on top of this because I'm not going to be doing it. I'm going to be spending time with the family and working on other projects. But this is a big part of the holiday travel. And it could be a problem. All right, I know I spent a lot of time on it and some jokes in there, but anyway, back on task. Related to the cold air, and this is what I am excited about. Uh, Kaylin here posting this, and uh, this this really starts to get my interest up. I love the lake effect. So he's saying when you combine the record warm Great Lakes with this polar air mass that's coming, and these very warm lake temperatures. A significant lake effect usually follows. The models are, are already highlighting cyclonic flow around the lakes and long fetches there uh, across each of the lakes to start December with a bang. So here would be your Great Lakes Surface Environmental Analysis, the GLSEA, as we like to call it, right? Everybody talks about that. Certainly. You know you do. Uh, the lakes are quite a bit warmer and um, than average and that's going to be, uh, and there's no ice yet, so they're wide open. And when you get that cold air coming in, that cyclonic flow across them with low pressure like up in southeast Canada, you start to develop these plumes that come across. In fact, the next graphic here that Kaylin posted shows it quite well. And so this flow around uh, low pressure sitting up here, all the lakes will be open for business. You can get some really long fetches or plumes of uh, lake effect snow in the coming days. Let me go back to this real quick and I can show it to you. Let's just go out here to the northeast and we can see that coming. Uh, so this is a Saturday afternoon coming up. Now it's still pretty warm overall. Again, it's not that brutal deep Arctic air just yet. So you're going to get these greens in here, meaning that it's just not quite warm enough for real deep uh, cold air columns. So the lake effect is going to be somewhat limited, kind of a slushy lake effect snow, but lake effect snow nevertheless for your favorite areas downwind of the Great Lakes. And just watch how those plumes ebb and flow over the coming days. Really fascinating stuff. I will be up there sooner or later. I'm also looking, by the way, for something that affects this area and specifically the east coast of Massachusetts, one of those nor'easters, because I want to test out our 360 cam capability more and more as we go forward. I spent a lot of time talking about it today on the morning discussion, so I won't revisit it now. But this area all through here will be my next target for some field work to, you know, go and do some coverage of interesting and impactful weather. And, as I said, to really put those 360 cams to use and show you the weather in neat and really interesting ways 
that you wouldn't otherwise get to experience it. Already covered that. So let's go to this. Hey, here it is. A very cool thing from Patreon. You may now gift a Patreon membership to anyone that you choose, as far as I know. Um, I'm sure they have terms and restrictions apply, but yes, you can go. I'll put the link to it in today's update. It's right up there if you want to jot it down. Patreon.com slash hurricane track. That's us. That's our community. And then slash gift. But I'll put a link to it. And uh, you can gift a membership up to one year if you want to. So at the most, it would be $120 for a year. So if you're looking for a Christmas present for the weather geek in your life, you can gift Patreon, our Patreon. I put these two up because I figured those would be the most likely. We do have the $25 level. Maybe I could throw that in there as well. That comes with a few more perks and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's awesome. I'm glad Patreon did this. This could help all kinds of creators out there uh, because people can now gift a membership, and even I can gift memberships to people myself, which could be helpful for different law enforcement agencies or state agencies that I just want to give them full access for the duration of an event or something. This makes it very, very easy. So way to go, folks up at Patreon or wherever they are. They're everywhere. So that's awesome, seriously. Uh, so if you want to give a membership, now you can. And the other thing, and I don't have a way to show you this, I'll just show you my Patreon homepage. Patreon has finally allowed it so that us creators can go live on Patreon. We don't have to necessarily use a third-party outfit like YouTube. Not saying we're not going to use YouTube anymore, because I love it, and they know that. And we're all, I mean, a lot of our patrons come because of YouTube, right? But being able to do something live within the Patreon um uh, universe would be, uh, I think, advantageous. I just have to figure out how we're going to use it. I do understand that we can connect our OBS, if you know what that is, you know exactly what I'm talking about, with broadcasting to our Patreon Live. I can stream from the phone. I just think it'll be interesting. So haven't done anything yet. Uh, probably when we do our first winter storm coverage event, I will set up a Patreon Live event, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, in fact, they will be watching from Patreon. They're gonna, they've got a bunch of us that are testing this, and I'm part of it. And once we do that, um, we'll let them know, we'll let you know, and we'll see how it works out. All right? So, oh, the other part, too, is we are sitting at almost 2,000 total patrons, which is really, really cool that the overall, uh, social media side of Patreon is growing. And I like that because we have this really big pool of people. We can interact with each other. I can post stuff for them, whether or not they are a paying supporter. I mean, it matters, but it, it's not a requirement. And so as that gets bigger and bigger, I see that we can start doing a lot more with this live stuff. So really happy with the Switch many years ago now. I think it's been about six years or something, maybe eight, that I went over to Patreon uh, from using just regular PayPal and our own funding and subscription service. Uh, we now handle it all through Patreon, and it has been fantastic. So there you go. You can gift Patreon, like I mentioned, and eventually we're going to have some live stuff right within Patreon to augment what we're already doing on YouTube. Speaking of the YouTube, you know the drill. Please like the today's update if you like it. And if you don't like it, that's okay, too. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I do the best I can, and I hope you do like it. And uh, share with your friends, family, whatever. And let's grow this community as big as we can possibly get it. Maybe 400 million. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, it sure would. Uh, hey, if I get those crazy thumbnails, that's exactly what'll happen, won't it? What a world. And you know it's true, but I'm not going to do that because how could I sleep at night just lying to people? Anyway, enough of that. Have a good rest of your Monday. I am Mark Suddeth. Good to see you. I will see you again a week from today.